Thank you so much, Mr. President. And truly honored to be here as a voice for freedom of the Cuban people and among so dear friends. Thank you, Mr. President, for meeting with us today, for your friendship, and for standing with us, the Cuban people, who wants to be free to decide our own destiny. Thank you, Mr. President, also, for your historic actions to support democracy in Cuba and to pressure the cruel communist dictatorship. Our Cuban people suffer constant oppression from the socialist state. For more than six decades, communist Castro regime has imposed the culture of the exclusion and the discrimination against any, any Cuban with a divergent expression. They abolished our civil liberties, our freedom of faith and of speech. They tried to delete our history, our faith, and our culture. The Castro regime tied the hands of the Cuban people to make us poor and dependent because communism mutilates the human soul in order to control the society. And those who raise their voice in favor of freedom, in favor of justice, those are risking prison and even death. This July 22nd will mark eight years since my father, Oswaldo Baya, was assassinated by the communist regime. My father founded and led the Christian movement for liberation. He was a leader of the political opposition, but he was also a moral leader to thousands and thousands of people who demanded a right to have a voice and participate to change the system. He was the most generous man I ever met, and he was killed by the communist regime. They were trying to kill his legacy because they were in fear of the, of the faithful, in fear of the conviction of a silent majority awakening and demanding freedom. And although they were, although the communist regime was able to kill my father, they were not able to kill his legacy. They were not able to extinguish the resolve of our people to secure our liberation. On the contrary, our resolve is stronger than ever. We carry on his work. Our movement grows faster every day. We will not relent until we are free. We are going to finish what he and many others started. I'm a freedom fighter but there are many of us among Cuba and in this table also. And I know that you, Mr. President, you are also a fighter for the freedom of the United States and the freedom of the world. Mr. President, I invite you to join me in commemorating July 22nd to honor the victims of communism in all the Americas. To honor all of those who have fought and died defending democracy in Venezuela, in Nicaragua, in Cuba, and in other parts of our continent also. It is important, it's vital to raise our voices to call for liberation of the political prisoners and to stop the impunity of the Castro regime. The same impunity that Castro felt when he killed my father thinking that the world was not going to react. Mr. President, Cuba is in crisis. Families are living through a deep humanitarian crisis and political repression, a crisis caused by the existence of a corrupt and criminal regime, a, re a regime that has nothing to offer to their own people but repression and violence, and that's what they are implementing right now against the citizenry. People are being detained, threatened, stripped from their cell phones, even physically assaulted, beaten up in the streets, taken to prison simply for taking a photo in the streets or posting in social media. That's the level of fear 
and the weakness of the Catholic regime right now. This is why your solidarity and the humanitarian help and the economic opportunities that Cuba needs should be directed only towards the Cuban people, preventing intervention from the regime, because the repressors should be cut out. We can on you, Mr. President, to continue shutting down all of the dictatorship sources of funding, which it uses to, su to sustain the Cuban military, its apparatus of, op of oppression, and its narco-terrorist activities. Mr. President, this hemisphere has paid a high price for tolerating six decades of Castro communism in Cuba. A regime that has caused the end of the democracy in Venezuela and in Nicaragua and the largest refugee crisis of our lives. It is time to end it. The regime that infiltrated societies to, express, to spread chaos, hate and division and destabilize their democratic governments throughout the hemisphere and also here in the, in the United States. Throughout the use of propaganda, the communist ideology has contaminated the minds and souls of young people in Latin America and in the United States. It is time to tell them the truth. President Trump, this dictatorship threatens peace and security of the continent. As you know, they are involved in criminal and terrorist-related activities drug trafficking, trafficking persons through the communist medical brigades, corruption, providing sanctuary and support to terrorists. Mr. President, I encourage you to indict Raul Castro, Diaz Canel, and all top officials of the regime. And very importantly, I encourage you to designate the Cuban military, its intelligence services, and the Cuban Communist Party as foreign terrorist organizations because their relation with the crime and the narco-terrorism threatening the region. Our movement, Cuba Decides, is a national and global initiative to force the Cuban regime to submit to the will of the people and live. It is imperative that all the nations in the free world support the Cuban people's fight for a change. Because the victory of the democracy in Cuba is essential to open the path to peace, prosperity, and stability in the whole hemisphere. Mr. President, my father, in a, in, in, in a letter to the Congress to the United States, he said that we Cubans, we want to be free, and we want to be friends with the American people. Please accept this coffin link with the coat of arms of the Republic of Cuba as a symbol of the friendship between our two people and also as a symbol of our appreciation for your actions and your solidarity. Thank you so much, Mr. President. Thank you very much. And looking forward to working together with you very soon for the streets of a free Cuba. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank everybody. I will not forget what I heard today. It, uh, it's very moving. It's a very tough situation. And uh, we've made a lot of progress, as you probably have seen and you know. And I have a feeling you won't be disappointed. And by the way, 2020 is very important. Very important. So good luck to everybody. Thank you. Really a good job. Beautiful job. I won't forget. You have a great representative right here. So Mario will be speaking. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.